Yo, 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 what up, what up, what up? This is Toby with Online Security, and we're back with another Cert Master Lab for Security Plus 701. Here we're going to be going over allow and deny lists. They used to be referred to as white and black lists, but now we call them allow and deny lists. You're either allowing something or denying something. How does this work? Let's go ahead and find out. Let's log into PC10. You know the username, you know the password. What better way than to, to learn about something than to actually do it? Right, so what we're gonna try to do is first is open up an application called RegEdit or Registry Editor. Right. Everyone should not have access to this application because this this can control this can make root level or since we're on Windows, it can make administrative level changes to our computer and the configurations on our computer. You can see we can open it now. Everyone shouldn't have access to this type of power. So let's close this up. We're going to open up Wireshell. And we're going to start up the application identity service. Let's right click PowerShell and run it as administrator. Going to go ahead and start up this service. All right, it's already been started on mine. If it's already started on yours, that is perfectly fine. We're gonna minimize this and we're gonna go to our local security policy. Let's go ahead and type this, this in. We're gonna open this up. And from here, what we wanna look at is the application control policies. That's gonna to be towards the bottom right here. I'm gonna double click it. We see App Locker. App Locker is a tool that we can use to create an allow and deny list. So we're gonna to go to App Locker. All right, cool. I double click app lock app locker. We can see executable rules. Let's go ahead and double click executable rules. We're going to right click inside of this nice open space and select create new rule. All right, we're going to create a rule here. We're going to go to next. We want to create a deny rule, a deny, 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 deny rule. We're going to leave the user set to everyone. All right, so we're going to switch this to path. We want to deny a certain path. All right, we're going to deny a certain path. Let's go ahead and hit next. Well, before we hit next, let's see what this question is. What are the prime, what are the app locker primary conditions for enforcing or triggering a rule? We see path, we see file hash, we see publisher. Let's go ahead and score that. All right, now let's go to next. Let's go ahead and give the path that we want to deny. This is the path to red to the registry editor. Cool. Let's go ahead and hit next. Do they want us to do anything over here? No. So we're going to hit next and create yes all right cool now we're going to go back to powershell and we're going to force the new uh, policy that we just created we're going to update it once this is done let's go ahead and try to open up reg registry editor one more time we should not be able to open it right but we need the policy the policies to get updated first right the the changes that we just made an app locker, we need that to get updated throughout our system first. Once that is updated, we can go ahead and make those changes. We're gonna go ahead and track our progress here. And then after that, we're gonna go ahead and go to the next section, right? This might take a few seconds, a few minutes on your system. Just let it do its thing, all right? It is updating the policies. We just created a deny list well we didn't create a deny list but we created a deny action to deny people from accessing the registry editor all right this is taking a little bit longer than i expected it to take right if we come back over here to local security policies we can see that it is being denied right this registry editor is being denied for everyone All right, we're gonna head and let that run, let it do its thing, we will come back to it. So next, we're gonna control an application using hashes. So we're still logged into PC10. Let's go back into this, to our local security policies. We're gonna create a new rule. Let's right click over here, we're gonna create a new rule. Let's go to next. We're gonna select deny, we wanna deny this for everyone. Go to next. This time we're gonna do it based off of a hash, hit next. All right, now let's go ahead and browse files for the hashes. All right, where are they stored? They're gonna be on a C drive. Let's go to our C drive. I'm gonna hit this BC, go to C drive, go to program files, and we're gonna go to Mozilla Firefox, right? After Firefox, we're gonna select Firefox right here and select open. All right, now we're back. It says, which of the following statements are true in regards to app locker rules? A hash rule denies execution of the file is renamed. A path rule denies execution of the file is moved to another directory. 
A hash rule denies execution if the file is moved to another directory. A path rule denies execution if the file is renamed. What does this say? A path rule simply denies the application from running based on the name and the location of the file. All right, so a hash rule denies execution if it's re the hash rule generates a hash of the file. So even if the file is renamed or moved, it will still not execute. So a hash rule denies execution if the file is renamed. A is this a hash rule? Yes. Okay, a path rule. What does a path rule do? A path rule simply denies the application from running based on the name and the location of the file. A path rule denies execution of the file is moved to another directory. A hash rule denies execution of the file is moved to another directory. A path rule denies execution if the file is renamed. Let's score, see if we got that right. Boom, good job. We're gonna go to next. Is this the name that they want us to give it? It doesn't look like they really care. So we're gonna, so we have two new deny rules. Let's go back over here. This is taking a while to run. Oh, boom. Looks like it just wanted me to hit enter. All right, we're gonna go ahead and run that update again. All right, to take, to update what we just did, the new rules we just did. All right, this is updated as well. So let's try to open up the registry editor again. We're gonna go back to the search bar, type in regedit. Let's see if our rules are working. Boom, the app has block, has been blocked by your system. Okay, cool. Let's try to open up Firefox. Boom, this app has been blocked by your system. All right, you just created your own allow and deny list, right? We actually denied a few things, right? So we did that using AppLocker, right? AppLocker is a pretty cool tool that you can use to create an allowed list you can use to create deny list and we just did it based off of off of an application called registry editor and firefox what type of app locker rule can be bypassed by renaming or moving an executable file that's the path path rule the function being performed by app locker in this lab is generally known as uh, block listing what user what access control options are available to block a user's ability to execute an application within windows natively remove the executable ntfs and app locker boom all right what type of security control denies execution unless the process is explicitly authorized that's going to be allowed and approved list Right, it's gonna deny anything that is not on the allow list. It's gonna deny anything that is not on the approved list. Boom, there we go. Up oh, one more. Which of the following is a valid definition of block list? Prevents access to only pre-authorized accounts, generally allows execution, uh, triggers a recording of the event, denies execution unless the process is explicitly authorized, prevents prevents access to only pre-authorized accounts, generally allows execution, but explicitly prohibits listed processes denies execution boom there we go all right y'all that is it for this lab if you've enjoyed this video you learn how to deny things using app locker please don't forget to smash that like button don't forget to subscribe to our youtube channel for future content we would love to hear back from you leave a comment in the comment section and we will see you next time peace